Welcome everyone to Fanboy Frenzy, the only podcast on the internet that's more electrifying than Storm's Bedroom. I am your host, Ryan Jarvis, and for this inaugural YouTube video review, we wanted to start out with the first hot game of 2015, and that is Dying Light. This is a follow-up to Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide, made by the same developers, although it is not a direct sequel of any sort. However, the game definitely bears many similarities, as you can definitely see from the gameplay footage shown before you right now. The game is basically an open-world zombie hunting game. The best thing I can say is it's the equivalent of somehow, if you could take Left 4 Dead and have it make love with Mirror's Edge, this is the baby that you would get, and quite a baby it is. Now... What I'm going to address, basically, is if you should buy this game, if you should rent this game, or if you should straight up pimp smack this game. Um, Really, I think, personally, by the end of this video, when I go over the graphics, the gameplay, etc., I think you'll have a pretty good idea over what exactly, or what exactly, you should do. Now, what I want to start off with is the graphics. Um, Graphics are very important. I know that uh, even though a lot of people say the graphics are not important, it's all about gameplay, I'm here to tell you graphics are indeed important. A good example is I bought Dragon Age uh, Inquisition just a couple of weeks ago. I heard a lot of good stuff about it, but it was on one of my backlogs, as you know we all have as a gamer. And uh, quite frankly, I played it and it made me sick as shit because the graphics were not 60 frames per second. And it was just really clunky and grainy and it just looked like shit. I mean, let's be honest about it. So uh, I actually took that shit back and put it towards this game because graphically, I just didn't think it was very impressive. Now, graphically, Dying Light is an amazing game. Of course, you can see clearly that uh, it's not without its flaws. I mean, a damn zombie just straight up did, you know, morph into the wall uh, straight up Houdini style, but that's beside the point. Uh, graphically, 60 frames a second, it looks absolutely stupendous. Uh, when you're fighting zombies, the, the physics system is really good. Uh, the environments look very good. Uh, the daylight is very different than the nighttime environment, obviously. Duh, right? But I mean, in terms of the way that you traverse it, the way that you interact with it, it's very, very different. And I really, really encourage anyone that when you look at this, take time like I am here. I'm kind of looking around up in the sky. I'm looking down the ground. Oh, shit. Somebody just popped up. But, uh, you know, you have to really take time to appreciate what it is this game has given us. Now, the game runs so smooth that I have not had the same sick effects. And I'm sure a lot of you out there do the same thing. You play games, you get kind of motion sickness. I haven't had any of that with Dying Light because everything is very smooth. Now, uh, when it comes to the character models, everything looks really, really good. I think there will be some video of that in here where you can kind of see. But, uh, you know, really, overall, graphically, the game is absolutely hot. Uh, The zombie types, there's various types. I mean, obviously, not every zombie is different than the other. There obviously are, you know, reused models and such. But quite frankly, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I think that we're nitpicking at that point. Uh, I think if if you get a game like this... Uh, you know, you're, it's, all, it's all about the gameplay mixed with graphics. Now, when it comes to gameplay, uh, just in brief, you know, we'll go over it. You can see it right here on the screen. The game has a skill tree, very much like many RPG games you're going to play, like a Borderlands, like a Destiny, and uh, or like a Far Cry. I think this is really more in line with a Far Cry 3, Far Cry 4 style uh, skill tree. Now, It all breaks down into into speed, agility, and power. Obviously, you know, it goes without saying what all those deal with. Now, when it comes to the power uh, faction of it, it really comes down to how badass you are, how how hardcore you are with a weapon, um, you know, how many strikes it takes to take down an enemy, uh, how many strikes it takes down for the enemy to take you out, and so on and so forth. Uh, When it comes to speed... Hence, it just means how fast you can run your ass away from the zombies and the hunters that you're going to encounter in this game. When it comes to agility, uh, being able to make certain jumps, being able to climb up, being able to freaking run and drop kick at a foe. uh, All kinds of different little neat things that you can do in this game. Um, Right here you can see really clearly one of the neat things about the gameplay I love. It isn't just the fact that there's so many zombies on the game, or as they call biters, 
Uh, it's very passe to call them zombies. Hello, Z Nation. Uh, Walking Dead had it right. Change that shit, because you sound generic. But anyway, biters in this game come in frequent order. There's different ones. You got naked ones. You got ones with clothes. You got men. You got women. You got some that have suits on, which are harder. As you can tell, I'm getting my ass handed to me right now, because I haven't gotten the, at this time, I hadn't gotten the real idea of the combat. Now, I'm, I'm pretty badass. I'm about Schwarzenegger at this game, but that's beside the point. Now, right here, you'll see that I'm actually trying to take back a uh, encampment or a safe zone and you do that in the game by uh these various areas they'll show up red on your map and you could take them out and then by destroying all the zombies by getting into the game and turning on these uh basically circuit boards and putting fuses in turn it on and then you shut the door and then no more zombies can get in and you need as many of these as possible in the game because dying light when it says good night, good luck, it's absolutely there, man. You really are in a tense, tense battle when the nightfall comes. You know, to kind of carry on with the gameplay argument, when you look at the game, you can see that uh, hopefully, you know, graphically, you can see that everything runs really smooth. But gameplay-wise, everything is on spot, man. When I hit the button, you know, something happens. There's no delay or anything like that. And that's what makes the game awesome. You know that if you get your ass handed to you in this game, it's not because the game cheated. It's just flat out because you made a mistake. As all gamers are going to do from time to time, we all make mistakes. And this game sometimes can be kind of unforgiving because the reason those safe houses are so important is because at night you become the hunted. At night you become the hunted by different creatures like these hunters. And really they kind of look like a mix between... Uh, some of the infected in Resident Evil 5 and 4, uh, and even if you've ever seen Blade 2, uh, the, 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 the kind of hybrid vampire uh, and human that's in that game or in that uh, specific movie, uh, kind of like him where the whole mouth and jawbone opens up. I mean, it really looks like a ripoff of that, but it is kind of a cool twist because you can go straight up uh, Batman detective mode when nightfall comes you can hold down if you're playing PlayStation 4 you can hold down your X button and it kind of puts out a um, an aura or like a detective mode beam if you will or field of view and it allows you to kind of take a look at some of these zombies these hunters that are around you and really the idea comes down to you can see I got my ass hand to me right there and you lose points which blows but you know, that's beside the point um, but you need these safe houses man because if you do not get them you are in trouble because when the nightfall comes, you have hunters everywhere. There's zombies everywhere. And these, these, these checkpoints, these safe houses become places much like this where there's a bed where you can go to sleep and basically save yourself that night. Save yourself the, the, the uh, fear of being eaten alive by one of these assholes. And um, quite frankly, there are benefits, though, if you want to be ballsy enough to actually stay out in the, uh, the, the city and traverse it and fight those enemies because it's double XP. So, you know, this game is all about experience points. It's all about leveling up your character. That's a core function of the gameplay mechanic in this game. And if you stay out, if you're ballsy enough to stay out after dark and fight enemies and run around then all of your points start to go up exponentially and you get a pretty hefty bonus when the nightfall is over uh, that you can then use in the game uh, to upgrade your skills and abilities um, other things that you get into with the gameplay is there's a lot of crafting I don't know if you'll actually see me in this video craft many weapons but uh, you can craft different types of weapons. You can craft lock picks because there's all kinds of chests and lockers around this particular city um, that, that allows you to, you know, basically get different items. You know, you can get different materials. You can get metal. Uh, right here, you'll see me talking to one of the uh, one of the individuals. His name is Bob. He's one of the non-playable characters, one of the NPCs, if you will, that you're going to meet in the world, in the universe, and you'll see beside him, there's going to be some chests that I can get into. Some of the chests are locked, and the lock picks mechanism in this game is actually pretty sweet. Basically, you use your left and right uh, sticks, and you have to kind of turn them in such a way and be ever so gentle, or you're going to break off your lock pick in the lock, and then, you know, they the, you only have a finite 
amount of them based on if you've bought any, if you found any, or if you want to craft them on the spot. Uh, that mechanic in the game, I think, is well, well done. Uh, one thing I wish I had more time to kind of explain to you, because I really wanted to get this video out for all of you who are kind of on the fence as to whether or not this game is as good or better than Dead Island, because when Riptide came out, uh, a lot of people shit on that game and thought it was pretty sucky and it was just a cash-in, you know? Like, basically, it was Dead Island one and a half. And uh, I'm here to tell you, right there, see, I just picked up a lockpick. This game is way, way better than that. I mean, it is absolutely better than uh, anything Dead Island could offer. And uh, one of the functions that is similar, though, the, to Dead Island is the ability to do cooperative campaigns. Um, I myself had some friends on with me last night when we were streaming on Twitch. And uh, at the time, you actually have to beat the prologue. It took me about an hour, <clears throat> hour and a half to beat the prologue just because I was trying to get a hang of the actual traversal mechanics. But all in all, we didn't have a time to really uh, get in and play the game that much cooperatively. Now, it does look like in terms of the way that the, the cooperative campaign uh, would work, is it's very much drop in, drop out. Uh, it seems to be just as easy in many ways as a Borderlands 2 or as possibly even Destiny, because Destiny is pretty easy as well. Watch me just boot the, get the fuck out of here. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Uh, but, you know, so many things in here you can see. You can kick, you can run. I drop kick on here, man, like I'm Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I think you can see that in here sometimes. But look, look how uh, absolutely, you know, just uh, it, it filled with buildings and how dense this world is. It is so, so fun, man. So freaking fun to play. Because look at this building. I could have actually came in from the bottom floor, but no. I said, screw that. I'm going to come in through the window like the Dark Knight. And uh, I'm going to smoke these fools, man. Look, boom. Boom. Look, kicking. Boom. Game to Sweet Chin Music, Shawn Michaels style. But, um, you know, th th this is something you that I'm actually going to give you a tip. You know, your weapons, in terms of gameplay, uh, it, it really doesn't take much for them to go down for the count, where you have to use more of the materials that you've collected just to repair them. So you'll see what I'm doing is I'm just kicking the hell out of him, man, like he's a beanbag or something, and just stomping him in the dirt. Because that's an easy way, if you knock him down, that you can finish him off and, uh, you know, go ahead and pilfer them, if you will, and take their supplies. Uh, definitely something you need to remember to do because initially I didn't get the hang of that. I was like, man, you know, I barely used my kick and I actually used a lot of supplies. Of course, there's a ton of supplies in here, so don't worry about that. If you've kind of been in that same boat as I was, um, it's really not something you got to worry about too much. Uh, one thing I will say that uh, lastly about the gameplay on the game is that, I mean, I cannot overemphasize, man, just how fluid everything is. Um, you could see right here, you know, I just happened to take this uh, safe zone, and uh, now that's another one that uh, I can use when I am playing at night to keep me from getting eaten by the hunters and, uh, and the place I can escape whenever they chase me, and which inevitably will happen. Uh, but when it comes to the co-op gameplay, I hope to be able to get you some video up of this uh, within the next day or so. Um, you know, all of us, it's really hard for us. I know my friends and I, we all do enjoy playing multiplayer together. But uh, it's something that I kind of want to get a feel for it more, uh, continue to level up my skills. And then once we feel like we're ready, then we'll start getting some content out there so you guys can make a intelligent decision, which is exactly what Fanboy Frenzy wants. We want all the fanboys and fangirls out there to be able to make an intelligent decision and uh, so that you spend your hard-earned money on something that is worth it. Now, one thing we haven't touched on is the story. And this is where it gets a little hazy. Uh, I, you know, I, I kind of bashed the shit out of Destiny because I felt like the story was as, wasn't as much lacking as much as it was just not there. I mean, not freaking there. It seems like this game is going to be another one of those games where the story is so forgettable, the gameplay really overemphasizes the story. I mean, if you take a game, some of the best stories I've played in the past couple of years, Far Cry 3, Borderlands 2, uh, the rebooted Tomb Raider, all those games have in common, they have a story uh, that, you know, your character seems to be developing. This particular story thus far has none of that. 
I do not know if we're going to get that in this game. Uh, but the storytelling methods in it, it's not like it's broken. Damn, man, he will not die. But uh, it's not like the story mode is broken, per se. But uh, I think it's just uh, one of those things where it, it's not very engaging at this point. I will say that Troy Baker, who I think is the gentleman who actually is voice acting, the, your protagonist in this game, is pretty awesome, man. That guy's done everything. He's been in Batman games. He was the voice of Booker DeWitt in Bioshock Infinite, which is really what stuck out to me. I'm like, well, no wonder. If I was Booker, which, you know, the voice is, it exactly sounds like him, I think I'd just stop leaving the house because you get into some shit, man. But uh, anyway, look right here. Look. Look at all those zombies. What am I going to do here? Uh, let's see, what am I gonna do? Yeah, tight squeeze. Uh, uh I missed. Ray Charles did. But, uh, anyway, story-wise, I think the story really is good. I, I would encourage everybody to, you know, kind of keep an eye on, uh, uh our, our YouTube channel because we're gonna put more about the story out there. But really what it comes down to is that your typical survive the, the night, you know, try to, try to keep your ass from becoming, you know, Taco Bell to the zombies. And it's all about trying to escape trying to get a cure. There are individuals in here, uh, very much like the Dead Island games, where you're having to do favors for this person so that you can get closer in their inner circle. Um, you know, it's one of those type of games. It really is, in a lot of ways, I said uh, Left for Dead meets uh, Dead Island, but maybe it might behoove me to say that it's closer to uh, maybe Dead Island meets Far Cry 3. Because in Far Cry 3, you had all kinds of different side missions that you could take part in. And in this game, you could do the same thing. And it kind of adds to the story as well. Uh, there's been a couple of times where there's been individuals maybe trapped in their shops. Uh, and I happen to run around and there'll be an icon on the map. It usually comes up in blue, usually a blue diamond or an arrow of sort. And it'll show you, hey, look, somebody's here. And it'll start flashing. And then you can save those people and they give you a reward. And, uh, you know, then from that point, they might give you a little bit of backstory. But ultimately... All I know is the beginning of the game, you start out, and you're infected, and you wake up, and then shit hits the fan in typical, typical gaming fashion, and overall, the game uh, play is really trumping the story at this point. I do think the story is decent enough to keep my attention if they continue to expand on it, which I believe they will. Now, overall... I told you by the end of this review, hopefully with what I've said about the game in brief, because obviously there, it, it takes too long. I do not want to do an hour-long video to go in-depth in depth. I, I think short and sweet is to the point, but we'll keep this uh, review at about 20 minutes. So ultimately, what should you do? Should you buy it? Should you rent it? Or should you pimp smack it? I encourage you, if you have not picked up your copy, to go out and pick it up immediately it is the first good game thus far of 2015 to be released it is absolutely amazing and yes i'm putting it over resident evil reboot you douchebags before i get the comments at the bottom telling me oh i forgot resident evil that shit has been out for decade plus uh actually a lot longer if you consider the original version it was remade from so forget it right now if you want to play the best zombie based game biter game walker game whatever the hell you want to call them this is definitely the best one on the market. I encourage you to make sure you go out and buy this game. This gets the Fanboy Frenzy stamp of approval right here in Fanboy Frenzy headquarters. Now, we appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. We ask that you would please follow our channel. We are a growing company. You can actually meet us, uh, or not meet us per se, but speak to us live uh, on one of our podcasts. All you have to do is please go to facebook.com forward slash fanboy frenzy and follow the page. We will tell you every week before we're getting ready to do a show. We will give you warning, hints, what exactly we're going to be talking about. And then you will be able to actually call into the show using the phone number 765-598-5559 and let your voice be heard, fanboys and fangirls. You can also go to mixcloud.com forward slash fanboy frenzy and uh, you can follow us there as well. We have a ton of podcasts dealing with gaming, pro wrestling, and pop culture conversation. We invite you to please go there and join us. You can also visit us on Vine if you simply search for Fanboy Frenzy. All in all, the game is absolutely amazing. Dying Light. That's the way we should say it. Dying Light is exactly worth my midnight trip to GameStop last night to get the copy of the game. It is worth it. 
My prayer for all of you is that you go out and pick it up. Good game, awesome game, great gameplay, great story. Well, not great, it's a decent story, but great ass gameplay nonetheless. Great graphics. It's a game that can really be a time suck for everyone out there. Fans, we thank you so much for listening. We ask you to please continue to check up, hit the like button, and subscribe to our YouTube channel because there's more, more, more coming. This is the 2015 year of Fanboy Frenzy, and we're here to take over. Thank you so much. This is Ryan Jarvis signing off. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen, and stay alive.